Hey everybody, Dr. Venus Opal here. It is almost 2020 and um, I just want to take a few minutes with you today. Um, so much to share. Let me begin with um, the saying thank you for all the love notes. People have been sending me love notes text messages, messengers, emails, just checking up on me. And I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you. I think that I have the best tribe in the whole wide world. Um, so thank you for being my truth tellers. Thank you for walking with me and for loving me and for empowering me, my leadership and my celebrity in the world. For those of you new to me, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm Dr. Venus Opal and um, my life is a miracle. By the time I was 16, I was living on the streets of Baltimore, eating out of trash cans and sleeping in urine and beer. My ninth grade math teacher, we called her Nana. She literally saved my life. She got me cleaned up. She gave me a place to stay. And um, she made sure I went to school. 14 years later, I graduated from Stanford University with a second master's degree and a PhD. I have four degrees. Hey, D. Um, I have four degrees. Um, I, ha I am a best-selling author. I have closed a show off Broadway. I am an award-winning playwright and poet. Um, and I am an entrepreneur. I have grossed over five million in less than six years. Hey, um, without a sales team, without government funding, I'm not a minority owned business, um, without angel invest investors or any loans. Okay? I'm a savage when it comes to I'm a savage when it comes to cash. And um I'm, I've done it by virtue of turning myself into a category of one, okay? And I do that with my private clients, okay? Hey, Janice, thanks for coming out. Thanks for saying hi. Um, let's see if there's anything else I should say. Um, I have a tour that's coming, so if you want to meet me in person, if you want to give me a hug, mm -mm, please go to rawtruthbook.com forward slash tour. Can one of my troop tellers type that in? Rawtruthbook dot com forward slash tour put that in so people who are new to me know how to you know stay connected okay so um i'm waiting i'm troop tellers i'm counting on you please put it in because i don't want to remember i love you back mom um please make sure you put that in because not everybody we have new people come every day okay i am a savage and i love you for it so please honor me and do what i ask please put in no oh thank you for that thank you robin no, i'm asking for um, thank you, Stella. I love you too. Uh, thank you. Hi, Tiny. Hi, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. For, so, what I'm asking you, I put the URL in, which is for the tour. It's the. It's called Raw Truth Book. Rawtruthbook.com forward slash tour. Please put that in the feed so people who want to stay engaged with me can come meet me in person. Okay? Because Facebook is one thing, but being in the room with me is a whole another story. So that's what I'm asking for support with, okay? And I want to talk to you about something today. Okay, hi, Tiny. <laughs> Should I just wait? Because, y all, y all, I'm, I, hi, everybody. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate you for honoring my request. I love you for that. Thank you for putting it in. Hey, Betsy. Hi, everybody. Hi, my troop tellers. Hi, everybody. Because <laughs> Nothing's moving. Okay. <laughs> like, we're, we're going to say hi first. Okay. Um, thank you, Robin. Thank you so much for honoring my request. Thank you. And if y'all want to, y'all can go ahead and start tagging people. You can start sharing this live, specifically to women who don't have their daddies. Okay. And to the brothers who love us. Okay. Because I got some things to say. And um, they're pretty profound. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm in the process. Thank you, D. Love you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate this for it. Hi, Kay. Um, I've been... Um, God, help me. Tell, show me how to begin. Show me how to begin. Okay. All right. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. You, oh, you Londia. I'm always... You, Londia, forgive me if I'm screwing your name. Um, okay. So I just wrote a book. It's called The Raw Truth, A Pimp Daughter's Diary, right? And I've taken the book and I've turned it into a one-woman play. So I've been working on that 
for for you know for the last few days deep and i have a director his name is nicholas a few he is beautiful he is a beautiful black man brilliant black man creative black man he is just all kinds of right oh robin thank you for sharing thank you thank you thank you thank you for your partnership i love my job and so as i've been writing the raw truth what's been arising okay oh motivate is real yeah we're not playing yeah i'm all over it. i got i got girl we we could talk about it yes thank you d yeah i'm into power crystals <laughs> as i've been adapting the book into a play what has been arising is my relationship with my father okay now i don't know is there anybody else here who doesn't know their dad either or or you know him but he was his absence even if he was there you felt like he wasn't there okay so i gotta see if i got any people who can flow with me okay I, honey we, don't we all <laughs> um but is there anybody, if you, if you are a person who doesn't know your dad, doesn't have a relationship with your dad, thank you, Rolanda. I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you for posting that, that link um, so people can stay in touch and come meet me live. Um, um, if you are a person who doesn't know your father or got something going on with you and your dad, there's some energy, there's some, there's some unforgiveness there, whatever, this, you know, let me know. If this resonates, I know him from, from from afar. We'll take it from afar counts. It's all good. If you got a daddy and you got a daddy conversation, I want you to hear this word. Okay. So I'm writing a play. All right. And my father, so I'm a street girl. I'm a street girl. I'm a street girl. Don't let the, don't let, don't let the doctor fool you. Don't let it boo you. I am a street urchin. Okay, I'm a hot mess on a good day. So please do not be seduced by doctor. There's more street in me than Stanford. I promise you. Okay. Um, no, I got you, T. Okay. And so my birth father. All right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Robin. Um, he made sure I that my mother didn't abort me. Right. And all of this I get into in the play. It's in the book, but I go. I focus specifically on my father for the play, um, and I'll tell you why. When I did Black Women Millionaires, I was focusing on healing my mother's wounds. My mother acted out her wounds on my body, right? And I think that to be fair, it's a human thing. Mothers and fathers—they're our biggest relationships in our lives. They shape all of the relationships. So I took on Black women after praying to God about it. And when I took on black women, I really took on myself. I took on healing all the hurts I had inherited from my mother, okay? And the good news is that I wasn't the only one, <laughs> thank you God. And I learned how to, and to be, to be fair, as a, as a street girl, I've always, thank you, I love you for your grace. As a street girl, I've always been good at money. That is not a problem for me, money is easy. I mean, I can show you how to flip paper 50 ways if you wanna know. Um, so, oh, thank you for the book inspire. Yay. So when I started, when I wrote, wrote the raw truth, I started writing the raw truth when I realized I couldn't have babies. Now I wasn't trying to have babies, but Janet Jackson had a baby at 50. So I was feeling hopeful. Right. But my, 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 my body said, no, my body, my, my uterus started to piss off my, the tumor started to piss off my kidneys and all kinds of shit. got kind of cray cray and I needed to get it. It was an emergency hysterectomy. So to help my, to help me. And so it was in that, is in that house that I started to really think about my dad because my dad wanted me. He made sure my birth mother, we call her mama. We call my adopted mom, Nana. We call my birth mom, mama. We call my dad, daddy, right? We call him dad. I don't know what we call him yet, right? Um, it was in the midst of that, that I started to deal with them. There was a person who fought for my life before I was born. How the fuck? How does that work? Before I was born, he fought for me. Okay? Now, the challenge has been he made sure mama didn't kill me, but he didn't stick around to raise me. 
Now, to be fair, my birth mother participated in making sure he didn't see me. It was a willful act on her part. It was a malicious act on her part. She wanted to punish him because she felt like she had taken a fall for him. And I understand it. I'm not suggesting she's wrong about it. I get it. Okay? Thank you, Danielle. And so, but, you know, moms sometimes use kids to punish dads. It has, it happens. And I am no exception. But as I, as I grow and heal and spiritually evolve, I love you too. <laughs> I love my tribe. I love all my truth tellers. I love you, Alice, uh, Alicia. I love you back. As I move into my destiny, as I move into that which is calling me, as I answer the call, what's arising is my father's presence as an absence. Do you understand? I mean, so let me go slower. So I want to slow it down and break it down, right? So when I talk about destiny, no, no, this is real talk. T, we're going in today. We're going to be here for a minute. Um, and there's my little boy, my happy, my baby, um, my puppy. Everybody stays happy. <laughs> He's such a puppy today. Okay, that's my, okay, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Um, destiny. You don't choose destiny. Destiny chooses you. That's a word. If you say you are out to fulfill your calling, your purpose, your destiny, and you think it's goal setting, you think it's your career, you think it's your money, you're not on the same page I'm on. Destiny pulls you. You cannot not do it. I'm pretty confident Dr. King did not wake up saying, oh, I want to go start a movement. I'm pretty confident. That, in fact, they went and solicited him. So I'm, that wasn't it. it called him. Destiny calls you. You have to, you have to hear the call. Many are called. Few are chosen. It's just real, right? And so when you have a destiny, it chooses you, right? And a destiny is something that pulls from the inside out, not the outside in. If you are ambitious and you want to get ahead in life, that's not destiny, that's ambition. And I can respect that, but don't call it purpose. Don't you do it. <laughs> I miss you too, Keisha. <laughs> I'm glad you're here today. Thank you for loving my spirit. I thank you for that. Okay? So I want you to be clear that when I'm talking about destiny. I'm not talking about ambition or goal setting. Okay? I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking about something very spiritual. Something holy. Something sacred. Something worthy of your life. That's what I'm calling destiny. I'm not calling destiny being a millionaire. That's easy. Honey bear, I can get you to a million in a year. That is not a problem. We can do this. So don't come at me saying you're destiny driven when you're really money driven. They're not the same thing. And I'm okay with both. You don't have, it's not an either or world, but call it, call it, call it, you know, call a spade a spade. All right? So please, when you talk to me, be mindful A destiny pulls you. It's almost an ache. It's a physical hurt when you don't do it. That's destiny. Destiny is not a um, destiny is not a um, a drive that makes you do stuff that hurts you. No, thank you, T. I love you for that. Destiny pulls you, and your passions, your skills, your talents all serve your destiny. And to be fair, most people don't bubble to their destinies until they're in their 40s or 50s. Because you got to live enough life. You got to live enough life, real living, before you can hear the call. All right? Dr. King, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Steve Jobs, Oprah, uh, and Frank, Victor Franco, uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. All of those things, besides for Anne Frank, because she died early, they all happened in their second careers. It wasn't their first career. Gandhi was a lawyer before he became an activist. So please hear my word when I tell you and I say it in love. When I'm talking to you about your destiny, I'm talking about something spiritual and holy and divine that only you can give the world. And it can be monetized, but it's not, it's not the way you're speaking it. Okay? So my destiny has shaped me and molded me and made me into a particular kind of clearing, a, a particular kind of container, a particular kind of condition, a particular kind of context that in my space, people heal. In my space, 
people make money. In my space, people become who they were destined to be. I was built for that. And it starts with telling the truth. So as I'm moving into my destiny, I'm watching what spirit is bringing me. And what spirit brought me was my daddy. Now, I was not prepared for this. I'm like, Lord, what, the, what? are you sure? Because I never had no attention on my daddy. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Shelly said, I'm amazing. I love her. Feed me, pet me. I love you. Thank you for the heart. I never had any attention on my father because I never had any, he wasn't around. He wasn't around. So why would I trip off somebody I never, you know, never, never met? Do you know what I mean? I didn't know. I don't. I have no loyalty to him. And because I have no loyalty to him, I have no loyalty to men. Now, let me help you understand that. I'm a girl child raised on the streets. Okay? Now, I don't know if you understand what I mean when I say that. Because I, don't, I think y'all think of the streets like hip-hop music. That's not what I call the streets. I call streets eating out of trash cans. I call the streets picking the roaches and maggots off of food and eating the part they hadn't contaminated. Okay? So when I say streets, I'm talking about sleeping on vents with hot air, with newspaper covering my body, in the lamplight so nobody takes me in the dark. That's what I'm calling the streets. So please hear my word when I tell you. When I'm saying street, I'm not talking polite. I'm talking survival. All right? Now, I have a strong opinion about survival. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think God does it on purpose, and I'm, I'm here for all of it. So I don't have the filters or the standards or the respectability that you may have because you were raised in a different tradition. As a street girl, I was raised in truth. <laughs> so what, with men in my life, they've always been transactional. The streets is about transaction, and I'll get into this at the play, I'll get into this at the workshop, I'll get into this at the, on the tour, because you need to understand that how you see the world is what you will bring. That's what will come to you, right? So I never had a real value on men because my father wasn't there. He was, his absence was a presence. The lack of him being there made me more prone to, to be around older men. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but hear my word on it, right? And... Because my relationship with men have always been transactional, it's always been functional. <laughs> I love you, Barbara. I was like, you pay for your anointing, Dr. B. That's why you're, you're a firepower. I love you for that. Thank you for that. And so as, as 2020 comes, and as we move into the end of a decade, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is a different, this is the end of an era. I'm surrendering my mother. I am. I'm, I'm calling it good. I'm calling it good. I'm calling it good. I have done everything I could to heal everything I could with her. And I've done good. She's a great woman. Mama's awesome. She's beautiful. She's powerful. She's creative. She's a br brilliant person. Life, life turned her into mama, so there's no harm, no foul. All right? But I'm going to tell you, going to 2020, I'm focusing on my dad. I'm focusing on my men. I'm focusing on the bloodline. I'm focusing on the blessings get passed down through the lineage of the father, not the mother. If you want to go biblical on it, check up on it. The blessings of the bloodline come through the lineage of the father, not the mother. So I'm claiming my father's blessings. I'm claiming my father's power. I'm claiming my father's ruthlessness. I'm claiming my father's confidence. I'm claiming my father's swag. I am claiming my father from the streets. I'm claiming it. I'm fucking claiming it all. I am taking up the mantle of being my father's daughter. And I know my father was not a nice person, but who is? Okay. My father was a street man. He was a gangster, a hustler, a pimp. He was all of that. He was all of that. And it runs in my veins. in my veins. Is in me. And I'm not ashamed of my daddy. He's an imperfect man. I mean, really imperfect, like so many of our men are. But he loved me. Do you understand? He loved me enough to keep me alive. That's got to count for something. 
We can't just throw away the baby with the bathwater. You know, Ike beat the shit out of, out of Tina. So do, what, what do, we, do, we, do, we, do we burn the records? What do we do? Do you see what I'm saying? Miles Davis, he beat Sicily. Do we stop listening to jazz? I'm not suggesting, I'm, just, I'm not condoning anything, but I want you to be with me in this. We, we villainize our men. But they were hurt too. We villainize our men. We turn our backs on them when they can't provide. We say bad things when they're hurt. We position them as the provider, as the protector, as the, as the man. And then we wonder why they leave. We wonder why they don't have any language to express their feelings. I can't tell you how many men I know who have been molested, but can't tell nobody because it's by a woman. And as a man, as a boy child, that's a status not a violation. I don't know my daddy. They say I look like him, I have his swag, they say I have his brain. I don't know, but I don't have to. What I do know is this, he loved me. It was an imperfect love. And he wanted me. That's enough for me. It's enough for me. He wanted me. No, he didn't raise me. But he wanted me. And I wonder if every woman who's ever been without their father if they understood that they were loved, even in the imperfect imperfection of his humanity, would they forgive him? Would they make room for men to show up? Men who could love you and take care of you and honor you instead of repeating the same cycle of nobody wants me. It's, it's amazing to me how many successful women aren't in relationships. They're not in a relationship. And I'm not saying like need a man. I'm not even tripping like that. And I'm even talking about same sex relationships because there is a masculine and feminine energy. So don't trip off that. Don't hold it. Don't, don't, don't get tied up in, the, in the, the mechanics of it. But this is what I believe. I believe our fundamental relationships with our mother and our father shape all of our relationships. And we either have an empowering relationship with them or we have a disempowering relationship with them. One or the other, right? And even if you don't have a relationship, you have one in your mind. You have one in your heart. And you have one in how you relate to the other gender. Okay? So, I'm very clear. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. I love you. I think that um, every woman has a relationship to men rooted in her relationship with her father good, bad, or ugly, okay? I'm queer identified, everybody knows that, okay? I actually love being queer. Queer is not the same as being gay, it's not the same as being lesbian. I'm not trans, I'm not pan, I'm, like, I'm not even bi, although I think people will call me bi because I've had sex with both men and women. But it's a street thing. The body doesn't give a f We'll talk about it on a tour, my point is this. Um, because my father wasn't there, help me God, how do I say this? Help me God, please help me. Because my father wasn't around, I wasn't protected. A girl child is not, is a, is not always protected, right? And I learned early on, you have to give to get, right? His absence 
made room for the wolves, you know? And I don't know if I had, if my father had been around, if I ever would have gotten, gotten involved with women. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think men have ever really stood a chance with me because of my father. And I'm not, it's not a blame thing, it's just something I'm really being with. I don't think a man ever had a, stood a chance because all the men that I've known in my life, it's always been a trade. A father gives for free. A father gives for free. That's what they do. They have function, they're, as, as a social unit, their job is to be accountable for that which they call their own. I've never had a man call me his own in my entire life. I've never had a woman call me her own I, either. My former spouse thought she did, but she didn't because she couldn't embrace all of me. She couldn't honor personal boundaries. She could only honor the pieces that served her, which is a fair trade. But a trade is not love, okay? My mother, Nana, loves me. My friend Serafina loves me. My friend John loves me. I know what love feels like. I have had people who love me with no ask. Imperfect as I am, my tribe, shit. Y'all love me. Y'all forgive me every day. So, um, which person, I get it, but when it comes to who you are attracted to, it feels like, I get it deeper and also my, well, maybe, I don't know. I'm just telling you how it is in my world, okay? Whatever your deeper is, you can do, you can spit it here or you can put it on your own platform. I'm not tripping. But what I'm pointing to is something that I would like for y'all to start to engage with me in, is our relationship to men, specifically through our fathers. Like I, and even religious, because I don't, you know, they say Jesus loves me. He died for me. I don't believe that. Because my father was, my father didn't die. He didn't die for me. So why would I believe that some person I never saw before would die for me? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're asking me to spend my disbelief and believe that Jesus loves me and that he died on the cross for me. When I have no physical evidence in my lived experience that any man would die for me. I don't. So I can't buy into something that my lived experience doesn't say is so. You're asking me to ignore the streets. You're, you're, asking, me to, you're asking me to dummy down and pretend that I don't know how people are wired. And it's, not, it's, it's an unfair fight. It's an unfair position. I'm not saying anything about Jesus. I think Jesus was a radical. I think Jesus was a master teacher. I think Jesus was the son of Christ. I ain't tripping none of that. I don't believe he died for me. I believe he died to fulfill the law. Okay? So... To me, he was doing what he was supposed to. He was fulfilling his destiny, and I respect that. But don't ask me to believe in a man dying for me when the man who birthed, who fathered me didn't come see me. I can't do that. I cannot. Now, I'm not suggesting anything about religion and belief. I'm just telling you about me. As a street girl, you're asking me to ignore all the pedophiles, all the men, all the hustlers. You're asking me for something. My lived experience says, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't do that. And I, and I will not diminish God. And I will not diminish the church. And I will not diminish any of that. I will reimagine it. I will, re I will reimagine a God of my understanding. A God who understands what it's like to deal with fucking golden showers. I need a God like that. I need a God who can hear me. Not a God I can hear, but a God who can hear me. So don't come for me about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You're going to end up, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Not because I'm disrespecting, but my lived experience will trump any theory every day so I'm being with the fact that I love my dad and he was a man a black man a brilliant black man who could outsmart any system but most of our men have they had to in order to survive in order to provide for their families the country is set up a certain way, and I understand it. And this is not an excuse. Excuses, that's child's play in my world. I don't bother with that. What I'm more interested in is freedom and fulfillment 
and peace and joy and love. I've chosen to live my life out loud. I've chosen to heal with the lights on. I've chosen that. I've chosen to tell the truth. And the truth is, I'm my father's daughter. And I'm not ashamed of that. I don't understand him. I don't understand him. I don't know how he could fight so hard for me and then go away. Mom, I don't know what that means. I don't know if he's dead. He could be in jail. You know? And I know he's done some, I know he's done bad things, but so have I. Haven't we all? I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a discreditor, you know? But I just wonder. If he knew he was loved. If he knew that there was no condemnation, no judgment, no ask, no requirement. If he knew that I was proud of him. I know he's done bad things. But if he knew how much he was loved in his absence, Would he have stayed? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that he kept me alive. And I will hold on to that. And I'm claiming him. I'm claiming him. I am my father's daughter. And so the play is in homage of him, you know, is an honor of a man who threatened to kill my mother if she aborted me. And where I come from, we don't make petty threats. We don't do it, it's a street thing. You do it or you don't. It can cost you your life to make a petty threat, okay? So, and my mother, my birth mother is not a gang. She's a firecracker. She is She's pure power, gorgeous, pure power. And um, if he could put this, the fear of death in her, that's saying a lot. So, in 2020, I'm taking on humanizing the black man. I'm taking on my dad. And I'm taking on men. Hey, how you doing? Glad you're here. I don't know what that looks like, but it's been brewing. It's been brewing for a couple of years now. And um, I've grown enough, I'm emotionally mature enough, I'm spiritually evolved enough to hold the good and the bad with no judgment. I mean, I can hold both sides. I can hold, I can see why mama kept me away from him. And I can see why he stayed away. I can see both without villainizing either one. Because inside of me, in, internally, spiritually, my job is to heal our hearts, to heal the heart of humanity. That's what I was built for, right? And you can't heal if you're mad at your mama or your daddy. You can't make your money if you're mad at men. You can't keep your money if you're mad at women. It will not work. It won't work. You'll, have, you'll hit a ceiling, you'll hit a, plateau, you'll hit a plateau, and you'll wonder what's going on, and it's gonna come back to those two fundamental relationships, your mama and your daddy, every time. So. I'm, we're going in, okay? And, and we'll be talking about this throughout the whole, my, definitely my primary weekend. I'm going to be doing my thing in a few weeks. Um, shit, because I've rewritten the play, I'm not even certain I'm going to be off book. I may even just read some of it, memorize some of it. I don't know how it's going to be, right? 
But I rewrote it. I rewrote the whole play. And, um, and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm thinking about doing some readings um, from it. Just I'm thinking about uh, starting a series, you know, Raw Truth Thursdays around noon at my time and doing teachings and readings from the book and or the play um, for people who are interested in coming and attending the play. Hey, Linda. Um, um, hey, Pamela, thanks for following me. So I found you a couple of months ago because your ad came out down my time. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad you're here. Okay, I really am. Um, my first time here. Well, 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 I'm, well thanks for listening. <laughs> Welcome to the Truth Tribe. This is what we do. Um, I, I, I got a header. I'm thinking about creating a, a, a small a group called the, the, like that. I just haven't quite figured out if I want to take that on because it's something else to manage. Sean said, I'm glad you're taking on the truth of Father because truth be told, you have to be in a vulnerable space. Oh, this is just, be, be in a vulnerable space. And you are the right person for it. Well, thank you. I thank you for that. So anyway, I don't know if I talked long today. I, I didn't pay attention to the time. I was just wanted to share. And um, I invite you to come hang out with me. Come be with me. Come to my, I have a work, I have a wealth workshop. You can't do money until you heal. You can't keep it, okay? Healing is everything. It sounds baby, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this for a minute. I've been doing it for over 30 years. Oh, I love your house. I love the name. Your teacher, oh, Oh my God, this is beautiful. Check this out. This is from Yah, oh, Yah Shammai. Oh, I'm not fucking up your name. I'm so sorry. Yah, Yah, Yashmal. Yashmal, you're the teacher every man deserves as a wife and every child deserves as a mother. Your scope is unimaginable. <laughs> I'm blushing. I love you for this. I don't know who you are, but I love you for saying it. Thank you for saying that. It's very encouraging very encouraging um so i think that's all for now okay i'm gonna go back work on the play if you want to come be with me in person so we can have a hug and you can learn um you can heal and and do money stuff with me i'm a money girl healing girl healing, healing first money second um come be with me on tour okay it's um what is it god <sighs> focus me come on rawtruthbook.com forward slash tour. Can someone put that in for me? rawtruthbook.com forward slash tour. Okay, can someone put that, can I, one of my truth tellers put that in for me so that people can, because we have people keep coming on. Just so you know, I repeat it. People keep coming on. And, you know, so we have to repeat it throughout the whole feed so people don't have to wait to the end or at the beginning, right? Yes, I am coming to Pamela. Pamela, I am coming to Atlanta. We're going to be in Santa Monica on the 17th, 18th, and 19th, Martin Luther King's birthday. Woohoo! Um, that's the premiere weekend. We have extra activities that weekend that are just deep. We go, we go in, right? Um, and then the, all the other tours are only one day stops, okay? No, I'm not coming to, no, um, Shadrika, I'm not coming to New Orleans, but I will be in Atlanta, okay? Thank you, Melody. I love you for that. Thank you for helping me and honoring me. Um, we're going to be, and thank you. Oh, thank I love you, Ms. Wilborn. Thank you for that. I love you for helping me. Um, we're going to be in Santa Monica for the premiere. Then we're going to, um, I'm going to try. Please make it. Pamela, I would love to hug you. And I would love to engage with your brain. I would love. And then also, because when we're together during the tour, Pamela, hope you come. Um, I have a thing called the Wealth Workshop. Oh, um, I'm glad you're learning. Thank you, Angie. Hope, oh, yeah, I am coming to Chicago, Patrice. I am coming to Chicago. Chi-Town called it. They said, look. I'm like, yes. Um, but I want to get back to Pamela because I want to make sure because she's new to us. Um, and thank you for your grace, Pamela, because it takes a minute to get used to my flow. Um, but um, we'll have the wealth workshop. And what I'm going to be doing is pulling the curtain back about how I did five million in six years with none, none of the stuff people say you need. Okay? None of the stuff you I, I don't even... You don't need a website. You don't need a blog. You don't need Facebook ads. You don't need that to make millions. Okay? You don't. I have done this. My clients have done over 8 million using my same programs and strategies and blueprints. This money is the easy part. Healing? <laughs> That's what takes the doing. It's, it's an energetic exchange. And so we're going to get into that. And I'll be breaking it down in terms of what pimping is. Oh, you don't need to mastermind with me. Mm -mm, honey, you, your brain will break. But what would be wise to do is to listen and learn from me. 
mastermind is a different thing. That's a, in a, that's a lot. Um, you need some legs with me just to get used to my whole flow. Um, but let's start off by dating. I, I date before I marry. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But come be with me, each one of you. Everyone who's listening within the sound of my voice, come and bring a friend. Okay? No, well, you're welcome. Get to one of the tour stops. We're going to be in Santa Monica, Houston, oh God, Atlanta, Chi Town, New York. We're playing New York. It's my very first time playing New York. And um, we're going to be, and we're going to stop. <laughs> I love you for laughing, Pamela. You're fun. Um, and I am going to, um, we're going to, we're going to wrap up the tour in July in Baltimore. I'm going home. I'm going home for the last tour stop. And it's a full day. It's the book signage from 12 to 1.30. The wealth workshop is from 2 to 5. Then your dinner break on your own. And then we come back for the performance at 7. Except for California, we do that at 8.30. But, um, but we'll be doing love seats, or I call them love seats when some people come on stage with me. We'll be doing a, um, a, a, share, a share the mic, just speak your truth thing. Okay, not a problem. Billion is easy. It's not just 100 million. It's no big deal. Pamela, is easy peasy. The thing about money is not so much the, um, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. Money is not effort. Okay, everybody. And Pamela, thanks for speaking it. Just because I sometimes don't remember to say it. Money is an energetic exchange. Okay? It's not the same. You don't have to do stuff to get money. I know it looks that way. I know, I know. We can talk about it. But that's not how money moves. Money doesn't move through your effort. It moves through your energy. It moves, it needs your heart space. It's, a, it's an energetic exchange. It's, a, it's an energetic thing. It's not an effort thing. Money is not effort. Money is energy. And if you don't understand that, you won't be able to move it at will. Now, there's some things that get in place. There's some marketing things that get in place. There's some sales things. But they're minimal. The biggest challenge with money is you <laughs> and we'll talk about that during the, the workshop thanks for sitting with me everyone i love you in, a, in that beautiful agape way i don't have to know your story to know your spirit you have a destiny you have one otherwise you would not be listening to my word you don't have to know what the name of it is but you do have to keep taking the steps forward getting in the room with me is a step forward it's a destiny driven action okay get in the room with me let me feed you let me show you how to do this so you don't spend decades working on stuff that doesn't make any difference. Okay? I love you. Pamela, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Thank you for engaging the first timer. Welcome to the Truth Tribe. <laughs> and all my brothers who listened in, thank you for that. Please make sure you share this with your men so they know they're loved. Okay? I love you, everyone. Talk to you soon. This is Dr. Venus Opal. Goodbye for now. Oh, and share and come to the Raw Truth Book Tour. <laughs>